So the Pacers are down 3-0. I thought the series was going to go 7 after the Marcus Smart injury. I was wrong and then some. So I guess we can talk about Indiana and what they should look towards this offseason and all that. The first thing is, of course, getting Oladipo healthy. And then after that, can they get a second offensive player with Oladipo? Well, I think the hope would be, one, that Miles Turner can become that. And we've been saying that for a few years. And Miles, there's a lot of things to like about him, but... His offensive game is still a little awkward. I mean, he's a good shooter, but he only takes like two and a half threes a game. And even then he likes long twos more than, let's say, 14 foot jumpers, which are obviously more efficient. He posts up sometimes not enough. And there's a fear that he's just not aggressive enough or not confident enough on offense. So that's a process thing, but he's still a positive player, a very positive player overall. You hope that Boyan could be that. I mean, he's 30 years old and he just had his best season putting up a little over 20 points a game for about two months without Oladipo. You think that him and uh, Vic could be a pretty good offensive one-two punch and depending on where the Eastern Conference is going the next couple of years in terms of star players leaving their teams, potentially. Kyrie, Kawhi, and whatever. Also, Kyle Lowry's decline. I mean, the guy's getting up there in age. There's a chance that Oladipo, Boyan, and Miles Turner could be a good enough 1-2-3 punch to make you one of the top two or three teams in the East. Now, of course, you can always do better, but but that does sound pretty good. Hoping that Boyan can um, keep on doing what he did this year, of course. I mean, if he goes back to the 14 points a game, dude, then that's a little disappointing, but... Even so, uh, I don't think that would be a bad re-sign for them. Boyan's a good offensive player. He doesn't kill them on defense. So yeah, between Boyan and Miles, you hope one of those two can be the guy next to Oladipo. Also, hoping it doesn't take a too much money to re-sign Boyan. Him and Thad Young. I'm probably not going to talk much about Thad in this video, so I'll just say here. Re-signing him would be smart. Maybe there's an argument to be made about freeing up space for Sabonis, but Thad's good. He has an all-around impact, and I don't think he's going to cost that much money. I should mention Sabonis, of course. There's always chance for his offense to keep on improving with rolling and post-ups and all that. I'll get to him in a little bit, because I think the conversation between him and Miles Turner is pretty interesting, but... I want to focus on if the Pacers can make some sort of a move or roll the dice on a free agent. I mean, I wouldn't bet on it if I was them because it's they're Indiana. I don't think that someone like Kemba Walker or whatever is going to sign here. In terms of trade assets, because they were trying to do that at one point, Mike Conley, I think it was. I mean, I think the thing that really helped them with that move was the expirings that they had they're not going to have them now because they're all going to be off the team or they're going to have to re-sign them so as a result I don't know if they can still make a move like that unless they put Sabonis or Miles Turner in the trade and I don't think they really want to do that so yeah now maybe some other teams would really like TJ Lee for Aaron Holiday and I don't know much about those guys let's talk about Nate McMillan is he a good coach I still don't really know. My gut feeling is he's probably a little above average, but is certainly replaceable. I mean, two years ago, I think a lot of it was just Oladipo being really good. And this year, I think it was Boyan carrying them on offense in a way that nobody really expected. And then Miles Turner taking a big leap on defense. Now, I'll give Nate some credit in the sense of Boyan sometimes scored in creative ways, and he does motivate these guys. And, you know, if your team is good on defense, I think the coach deserves some praise. But while I do think Nate is going to be here past this offseason, I don't think he is the the best coach for this team, just because I, I think his X's and O's game could be better. As far as who could actually replace him, I don't know, but... I just don't think Nate McMillan is some awesome head coach. But he's not bad, so... Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the sabonis Miles Turner thing. So... They tried playing them together against the Celtics. In the 24 minutes that they have played over the three games, they have a net rating of negative 34. 
it's not good. <laughs> so, you know, that on top of how it was in the regular season where I think it was like they were good on defense, but they were bad on offense. I think you, you got to find out if those two can play together because you're paying Miles Turner $18 million. And I know the cap's going up and all that, but I mean, Oladipo's contract is up after 2021. You have to think that they're going to want to keep him and they're going to pay him more than $21 million a year because that contract is suddenly a hell of a bargain. Assuming that Oladipo is still the same guy as he was last season. And if, you, if you're if you going to pay DeMontis Sabonis to be the third best player on this team and he can't play with Turner and Oladipo because him and Turner just kills the spacing and all that, then you're kind of wasting your salary. So you just got to figure out if those two can play together. Now Oladipo being healthy I'm sure would help because then he could just create for both of them, right? You could run Sabonis Oladipo screens and Turner could space out and things like that. And I think defensively those two have potential. I mean, Miles is of course one of the best rim protectors in the league and I think Sabonis is athletic enough to defend some of the slower wings on each team. I mean, you certainly can't put him on anybody, but I think you can survive against almost every team with him defending someone kind of on the perimeter. And of course, if you prove that those two just can't be good together, then you might have to trade Sabonis. And it sucks to say because the guy's a good player, but again, if Sabonis is going to get $15 million or something, and then Miles Turner's making 18 but then you can't play them together in fourth quarters, that's going to be pretty rough. Now, maybe if Sabonis took a super bargain deal, then you'd be content with him just being the sixth man and not playing with Miles Turner that much, but that's some wishful thinking. <laughs> Another thing I want to bring up, and this is going to be similar to what I said about Donovan Mitchell uh, yesterday with the Jazz. Are we sure that Oladipo can't play point guard? I mean, he's a good passer, which I think is about all you really need in today's NBA. Just be like a respectable passer and don't be a turnover machine. And looking at the last two seasons, I would say Oladipo's usage rate average is about 28-29%. His assist percentage is around 23%, and his turnover percentage is like 11%. That seems pretty good if you ask me. And maybe that's the best option for this team, because, you know, Darren Collison, Corey Joseph, these guys are serviceable, but I look at it like this. If Oladipo has the ball all the time, and then you used the about $18 million that Darren Collison and Corey Joseph are making and you distributed that to one more wing or maybe two other wings, because while I don't think the Pacers are going to be a huge free agent destination, they can certainly get good NBA players, I'm going to assume, right? Then I think that's kind of better, because, I don't know, it just makes sense. Oladipo with more shooting. I know I sound like a broken record with the give the star player the ball with as much shooting around him, but it works, man. That's an idea, I think. Now, maybe there's a chance Oladipo wouldn't really like it, and maybe some of his uh, lack of playmaking skills would be exposed at the point guard position, but I don't know. I feel pretty good about it. So yeah, that's what I got on the Pacers. I think their chances of a big trade kind of went away because all their expirings are now no longer expirings. See if Miles Turner and Sabonis can play together. Think about moving Oladipo to point guard. Of course, I can be wrong about all of this. We never really know what's going to happen in the NBA, and I've been wrong many, many times through all this stuff. The Pacers are intriguing, and hopefully Miles Turner shoots more threes.